And of course, the plot thickens. The plot thickens in the divorce of Evil Marcel and Michael Sterling. And we're going to talk about it. So I, I'm just scrolling through, opened up my Instagram. Y'all know I've been trying to take little breaks here and there. And I get a tip from my boy Shamar, who lets me know that Chronicle Speaks, okay, has posted some tea, okay, about Michael Sterling getting the DUI back in February of 2022. All right, so let's talk about it. And let's talk about, is this related to perhaps why Eva and Michael are getting a divorce? Hmm, just things that make you go, hmm. Okay, so Chronicle Speaks has, of course, all the receipts. I'm talking all the court docs, all right? So I'm going to place the link for them down in the description down below. But baby, she got the receipts, baby. She got them. She got them. So let's just discuss real quick what's going on. So on February 4th, 2022, he, Michael Sterling, was charged with a DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol. Another charge of following too closely. And another charge of reckless driving, which are all misdemeanors. Okay? Now, interestingly enough, you guys may recall that the news broke about Eva and, Mar Eva and Michael's divorce probably around, what, March 28th? But she actually filed on March 23rd, stating that their marriage is irretrievably, irretrievably broken, okay? That's according to the docs obtained by people. However, all right, on March 22nd of 2023, there was a calendar notice, and the calendar notice was for the state versus Michael Todd Sterling for a plea and arraignment calendar date at 11.30 a.m. on April 27th of 2023, okay? So we're just kind of looking at the timeline right now. We're just looking at the timeline right now. Now we go back and we get a bit more details from the court records about what actually happened, all right? So apparently he was operating a 2011 Ford Mustang GT in an adjacent lane somewhere in Sandy Springs when he suddenly and without warning negligently carelessly and unlawfully operated said vehicle by driving under the influence of alcohol, driving recklessly and following too closely, slamming directly into the rear plaintiff's vehicle, causing it to spin out of control until it collided with the concrete median on the right side of the road. As a result of the collision, the plaintiffs were hurt and suffered multiple injuries. So we'll talk about this idea of the plaintiffs in just one second as well. Now, we also, they have, listen, Chronicle Speaks has the officer's report and everything in which Michael Sterling declined the typical sobriety test because he says he's a lawyer, okay? He is the lawyer. And the officer could, could basically smell alcohol on his breath. So to take things further, all right, and because... There was indeed a crash. Michael, of course, has entered his waiver of not guilty. And he's requested a notice of a trial be sent to his address or whatever the address that he has listed. But the kicker on top of that is that the other the the people that he hit okay is filing the suit 
Mm -hmm. Because they have suffered medical injuries, medical expenses, and damages. Damages include emotional distress, personal inconvenience, mental and physical pain and suffering, loss of wages, loss of enjoyment of life due to the violence of the collision and the injuries to the plaintiff's bodies, plus an inability to live a normal life. The medical expenses total about $2,000. And a final amount will be determined later. So let's talk about it. I don't know why this this makes me think of mm, I think to a lesser degree like of Erica and Tom Girardi and really the only similarities being that the news of Erica's divorce popped off right before you know the news about everything that had been going on with Tom Girardi really popped off. Only similarities. Um, and the fact that the husbands are both attorneys. And the fact that attorneys would know how a spouse should potentially move in a situation like this. Now, no telling how significant any of this is with regards to you know, how much they would have to pay or anything like that. But I think one of the things that um, as Nini says, is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? Probably. Probably. Probably a coincidence. But we do know it's happening. It does kind of also lead into some other questions about, you know, what may have been transpiring in the relationship in the year leading up to the divorce filing, which is what I find interesting. Because, you know, a DUI for someone of Michael Sterling's status in the community, um, that's pretty major. It's pretty major, especially for him to be an attorney. Now, I know lots of people with DUIs. Um, <laughs> most live to tell the tale of regret and, you know, they do what they need to do and they keep it pushing. And the hope is that they learned their lesson. The hope is that no lives are lost. And also the hope is that you make a different decision next time. For me, at this point, I feel like if I know that I'm going to have any spirits, it's Uber for me. It's the car service for me. You know what I'm saying? So here we are on the late night creep. Talking about what's going on with the Sterlings. You know, the bottom line for this story is, for me, at this point in time, I'm just glad everybody's okay. That's what we can be thankful for. Everybody's okay. Everybody has lived to tell the tale another day. And we is moving on. Unless more information comes to light. Shout out to Chronicle Speaks for this information. And shout out to my boy Shamar for alerting me that this had popped off. And with that, I bid you all adieu for this late night creep.